Alright, so this is for my English project. Um, so, the first question is, where and when were you born? I was born in Cleveland uh, in March of 1948. So, you're how old? I am 69 years old. Like, what is your full name? Michael Stanley Gee. Where do you get Gee from? That's just the family name. That was my dad's name, and uh, it uh, goes back. They traced everybody back to uh, Scotland and England and Ireland back that way. Why is your um, your what? How do you say professional it? name? Yes, Michael Stanley. Believe it or not, because Gee is not a very usual name. Mm -hmm. When I signed my one of my first record deals, I signed to a label and they had a guy uh, another artist named Arthur Gee which was just crazy there were seven people on this label and two of us were named Gee which didn't make any sense mm -hmm. so they told me I had to change my name and they asked me what's your middle name and I said my middle name is Stanley and they said Michael Stanley they said that's okay so that's how that became but I have nothing to prove that I'm Michael Stanley nothing it's not my legal name so it's like I have to carry a CD around so yeah this is me <laughs> um, if you have any siblings what are their names and how old they are I have one sister named Nancy who's 60 years old and does she live here and she lives in Savannah Georgia um, what did you want to be when you grow up when you were younger I wanted to be a baseball player or a basketball player. You know, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, there weren't a, there weren't a lot of musicians back then. It might seem hard to believe now, since everybody you know, somebody's been in a band or has this and that. So that wasn't anything that was even realistic. You know, I think my parents wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. But uh, um, I always thought it, like you know, like most kids, it'd be cool to be an athlete. You know, uh, and I was okay. I was a pretty good athlete. I got a scholarship to college to do it in baseball. But I also realized at a certain point that I wasn't good enough to be a professional. So it went another direction. Um, what, element, what elementary school did you go to? I went to a beach school in Rocky River, Ohio. Um, did, did you live there? Yeah. Like when you were growing up? Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you like to do just like in your free time? It was all sports. It was all sports. Basketball, baseball, football. Um, I had a, the group, my friends that we hung around with, that's all we did. You know, it was, um, there wasn't, a, there wasn't as many organized sports like you have now for, for guys and girls your age. It didn't really have organized teams till we got to junior high. So it was all just pickup games. You know, we'd go to the park and Depending on what season it was, we'd play basketball or baseball or football. So, what made you want to be a musician? Uh, I just really, I just always liked music. Uh, I like singing, and um, uh, you probably heard of the Beatles. Yeah. Well, after the Beatles came around, which was in like 1964, it was the first time that people, for some reason, thought, "Oh, maybe I could do this. You know, maybe we could be in a band or sort of thing." So that was. It was all, uh, I never planned to do it. And even after I started doing it, I, I didn't think it was going to last more than a year or two. But here we are, like 50 years later, you know, so. Um, how old were you when you started to play the guitar? I started playing guitar when I was about a sophomore in high school. So I would have been 14 or 15. And, uh, like, were you taking, like, lessons from I took I took lessons for a few months. But the guy that I was taking lessons from, he wouldn't teach me the songs that I wanted to learn, which were all the songs that were on the radio. You know, he wanted me to learn these silly old songs, and I didn't want to do that, so I stopped taking lessons. And um, I haven't had a lesson since I was about 16. Uh, and any, any kind of guitar playing talent that I have, I've learned from other people or from figuring it out myself. Um. Who was your favorite artist when you were younger? I liked Elvis. I liked Elvis a lot and all the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just got it here. Um, 
it was the one it was it was where you realized first of all that you know what I, I like the way he sounded and I like the music and it was really different from things that went on before that which is you know it's hard to believe now but he was really wild compared to what was going on before and it was like oh my goodness what's going on here and the girls liked him so you know it seemed like that was a good thing um what high school did you go to rocky river high school so you how long did you live in rocky river for um i mo we moved there when i was in the fifth grade and then i lived there all through high school and, and when i was going to college my parents still lived there and they lived there you know probably about 10 or 15 years after i was out of college what was your favorite subject i liked english why i like, I like to read i like stories i like to write uh, and it wasn't math. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get along with math at all. English, history, I like history a lot. And uh, those are my favorites. Um, what was the name of your first band? My first band was called The Scepters. And my best friend in high school and I started it with uh, three other guys out there. And uh, there was no rule, you know, there was no rule book. We didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we just started it. And, how do you learn a song? I don't know. Well, we figured out how do you learn a song, you know, and then what do you do when you're standing on stage? Well, you, you pretend you're somebody else like you saw on TV. If you do that. So we were just making it up like everybody else. We were just making it up as we went along. Uh, why'd you pick that specific name? I have no idea. <laughs> but I will tell you this, to this day, any band I've been in, getting a band together is hard. Getting a name for a band is even harder because everybody has a different idea and I say oh let's call it this and you go no no I want to call it this and this guy a drummer calls he says I want to call it this it's harder than any part of the whole thing um have you ever played any other instrument besides um the guitar I play bass I can play bass I was a bass player in a band for a while and I play bass on most of my records now it's fun um if you would have any, like, a senior quote, like, now, what would it be? Now? Pay attention. <laughs> You're going to need it later on. Um, what college did you attend? I went to Hiram College, which is a small college about 50 miles south of here, down in, uh, what county is it in? I can't remember what county it's in. It's down near Kent State. What was your major? I had two majors. I majored in sociology and I majored in comparative religion. Uh, what is a uh, so, so sociology? Yeah, that's just that's the study of of um, why people do things the way they do and societal things of like uh, uh, how society changes and like how your generation is different than my generation and different than your mom's generation and things like that. Um, what was your first concert that you ever went to? Ooh, that's a, good, that's a good question. First concert I went to, it was, a, uh, it was a group called the Kingston Trio, which was a folk group, which was really big when I was about your age, which I really liked. And my dad got me tickets to that and let me go. Uh, that was the old days when nobody was that afraid to go do things, you know. And it was like, we took the bus downtown and we went to the, the place where they were playing and it was neat. What was your first job? My first job, other than uh, well, in the, back in the old in the old days, we used to go around the neighborhood and we shovel snow. We'd go up to your door and say, "Hey, ma'am, we'll shovel your driveway for two bucks or something," or cut your lawn. That was another one. But my first real job that was that wasn't like that was I worked at a fruit and vegetable stand. That was uh, and I sold fruit and vegetables to people, and in the winter. It was a Christmas tree farm, and did that. Where was that? That was in Rocky River. Um, what, what was the first kind of car that you drove? The first car I drove was my dad's car, of course, which was a uh, 1964 Chevrolet Impala, uh, yellow. It was really ugly, but <laughs> that's okay because it didn't matter as long as it was a car. My first car that I, of my own, was a... 1948 Plymouth Coupe that I paid $150 for. Um, 
What did you do after college? Uh, I was I went to work um, I went to work for a chain of record stores. There used to be a big chain of record stores in Cleveland. I went to work for them, and I worked my way up to where I was a regional manager. So I was in charge of all their stores in seven different states. I traveled around to the stores and make sure that everybody was doing things right and you know this. And uh, then I got in a fight with my boss, and I got fired. And um, I had no job. And your grandma, Libby, had, ju had just had your mom and, and, and your aunt. And so she had quit her job. So we had two little girls, like two months old, and neither of us had a job, which is not a good situation. <laughs> so I, I said, what can I do? And I said, well, maybe I'll do this band thing for a little bit and see what happens. So I, I thought I'd try that. Maybe it'll last a couple years, and then I figure out what I want to do. But here we are. <coughs> Excuse me. Where and when was your very first concert? That I played? Yes. Uh, my very first, uh, the first where my first band played played out. We played in for a part for a party in somebody's basement, and there were four of us, and we got paid twenty seven dollars. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, when when did you record your first album? I recorded my first album with a group. Uh, the group was called Silk. And it was on ABC Records, and we recorded it in New York in 1968. Um, how did you meet them? They were guys uh, that I had known from other bands, and a, and a couple of them. I had played with in the band, and I was in college at the time, and one of their guys quit, and they needed a bass player, so they got me, and then we got lucky, and we got a record deal, and uh, got to make an album. Um, what was the name of your first big hit? Uh, the first song that anybody probably knows from me was a song called Rosewood Bitters, which was in 1970. Um... How many people were in your band? It's changed over the years. It started with three, and then we got a drummer, which was four. And by the time it, uh, that, that, that the Michael Stanley band ended, there was, I think, seven of us. Um, what was the biggest crowd you ever played in front of? Uh, 87,000 people. Uh, it was a concert. Down uh, in downtown Cleveland, um, where the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is now. Well, that used to be empty. That used to be the parking lot for the old stadium where the Browns played. And there was a concert for the city of Cleveland, and there was about 87,000 people. It was pretty crazy. Uh, when did you know you were famous? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you know you're fa famous when, uh, when people... Um, Ask if they can take your picture with you, or if they can get an autograph, you know that sort of thing. Yeah, everybody, everybody has a different idea of what famous is, but I think that's probably the one that, you know. So, how did your band now like meet? Um, the the guys I'm playing with now. Yeah. Some of them are from the old band, and then every then other people are ones that we met along the way, and it might be well, you say say you need a another guitar player. Well, then somebody in the band goes, well, I know this guy. I used to play with him in this band, and you check it out, and you do auditions, see if you like the way they play, and see if you like them as people, because you're going to have to hang out with them a lot. If you don't like them as people, you know, it's, you know, it's like you're in your situation. It's much better if you like the, the guy you're throwing to as a quarterback yeah. than a guy you, you don't like, you know? You get along better, it works better. Uh, what kind of music did you play? It was a rock and roll band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you enjoy your fans? Yeah, we were. We've been really lucky to have a, you know as many fans as we did, and to have them stick around as long as they did. I mean, you know, there's always crazy people, but uh, that just goes with the territory. But we've been really, we've been really lucky. We had a good bunch of fans. If you were, if you weren't a musician, what would you do? You know what I, uh, I think I would have, I would have really liked to have been a coach like a high school coach or a college coach or something like that. For what sport? Oh, basketball, baseball. Um, 
I think that would have been fun. And that probably would have been the way I went. Um, what's your favorite part about being a musician? Uh, that you're, well, you're doing something that you love, which is important. And you're really lucky if you have a job that you love to do. And the other thing is that it's, I think it's doing something positive. It's people, it's making the people that you're playing to happy. You know, and so for whatever amount of time you're there, an hour, two hours, they forget about all the, you know, the things in their life that are, aren't so cool, and they're having a good time. And if you can make somebody have a good time, make them smile, I think that's a good thing. Um, how many records have you recorded? Uh, about 32 albums. Um, this was actually one, um, didn't Aiden say this? I don't know which one. Um, uh, I think this is from Aiden, but he asked, um, why the hairstyle? <laughs> <laughs> well, I might ask Aiden the same question. You know. uh, it's funny because if you look back at the pic pictures, you know, it's like certain things were, you know, that's the way people wore their hair then. You know, it's like when the Beatles started, then people didn't have short hair anymore, and then they started to grow their hair long, you know, and then it got back to where people had short hair again, or people had this hair again. You can check out some of the pictures of your uh, mom and your aunt with their big hair back in the in the 80s, you know. It all depends. And, you know, who knows. Um, what is the craziest thing a fan has ever done? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We, we, you know, you used to have people, uh, when your mom and your sister were little, when you were living in South Euclid, you know, there'd be people that would hide in the bushes of, the house or you know, drive by the house <coughs> all the time and screaming your name and honking horns and fans do silly things. Um, what other <coughs> bands have you played with? Uh, we played with just about everybody. I mean, from the, that time period, you know, the Eagles and, and uh, Foreigner and Journey and, and uh, Joe Walsh and Jay Giles band and just yes and all. A lot of the guys that are in the Hall Rock and Roll Hall of Fame we've played with. Um, how many music videos have you made? Three. We made three, and we we were lucky because uh, that all started right when we were kind of at our biggest point, and so that really helped a lot. There was actually a time when MTV, <laughs> it was that's all it was. It was videos all day long, different videos. No, I don't. They don't have any. I don't think. Um, have you ever lived, um, wait, hold on. Have you ever lived anywhere else than Ohio? Nope, I've lived in Ohio my whole life. Um, uh, what do you love most about Cleveland? I just think it's a, uh, I like the people here. I, I, I like the, I mean, I like the fact of there's a lot of trees and things like that, and it's a green, you know, it has all the things I want, you know, it has the sports teams if you want to do that, it has good museums, it has good restaurants, uh, I mean, I won't lie, I'd like to get out of here in January and February and go somewhere else for those two months, but um, other than that, I, I like it, and uh, that's something you got to do, you got to travel, and then you see how different every other place is, and you realize what, then you start to realize what's good about where you live. What was the best day of your life? Best day of my life? Probably uh, probably the day that uh, your mom and your sister were born. How far apart were they like born? Like, I was like six or seven minutes, something like that. Who's older? Anna, your mom's the young one. <laughs> um, what's your favorite food? I'm gonna go with pizza. Can't lose there. <laughs> um, what's your favorite color? Black. Why? Uh, I just always thought black black guys that wore black looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mom, you told me to write this one. <laughs> it's not bad. This is your favorite daughter. No. <laughs> um, but add that one in there. <laughs> uh, 
So she said, um, what made you become a DJ? Um, I was out of, uh, I was, I was, after the, the band broke up, I did TV for a while, for about six or seven years. And then uh, someone asked me if I wanted to do radio part time while I was doing both. And I did. And then the show I was working on on TV went away. So I figured, okay, I'll do this radio thing for a couple years till I figure out what I want to do. And uh, that's been almost 30 years, so obviously I haven't figured out what else I want to do yet. <laughs> uh, what, is the, what is your favorite song you've ever written? Um, it, it, cha it changes, it, you know, people ask that all the time, it changes. I, I, a song like Lover, I still like that song a lot, the one I wrote a long time ago. And, and uh, Depends what mood I'm in, you know. Uh, do you have any pets? Right now, I'm down to one. Uh, a rescue dog named Ted, who you could heard barking upstairs. Yeah, but uh, we used to have, uh, for a while here, we had six dogs, and, or five dogs and two cats. But all in the same house? All here, <laughs> yeah. It was pretty noisy. <laughs> um, what do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, I like to read. I like to watch sports and stuff on TV. I like movies. Uh, but I'm kind of lucky because my hobby, when you were down here in the studio, I like doing this. And even if I wasn't doing it to make money with it or to put it out, I would probably still do it because it's, it's fun. That's my hobby. All right, so I just got on this one now. How do you feel about the Browns? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, well, I think they're moving in the right direction. They're getting better. Yeah, they're, uh, they're getting better. When they left, when they pulled the team out of here back in 95 or 6 or whatever it was, uh, I, it was hard to get emotional about them when they came back. I mean, I'm glad they came back, but um, I used to live and die with them. You know, if they lost on Sunday, my whole day was ruined and my week was ruined till the next game. And I don't feel that way anymore about them. Uh, but I've always been a big fan, and um, I don't know if you know this, but my dad, your great-grandfather, he was in radio, and he broadcast the very first Browns game on the radio way back when. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Um, how many kids do you have? I have twin daughters. So, <laughs> my mom... Sarah and Anna. Okay. Um, five wonderful grandkids. <laughs> I was just about to ask that, too. Um, when do you think you will retire? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we're real lucky. I never thought we'd be playing at this, you know, at this age. I never thought we would. Um, I think there's two things. As long as, first of all, as long as we can physically do it. And second of all, as long as anybody comes out to see it. Um, they're still coming out, which amazes me. It really does. And we can still do it, which amazes me. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping a little while longer. Um, here's one from Mom. Um, <laughs> this is actually the good one that you, that you said. Um, what's up with the yoga pants? <laughs> They're comfortable, man. <laughs> you know? So you like, you, you got your shorts, you got your thing, you know, you, you got your thing. What's up with the yoga? We man? started getting desperate for questions. <laughs> I literally put in parentheses, mom. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you don't want yeah. that one on him. Um, what advice would you give a young musician? Uh, practice. <laughs> but more than that, play with guys, play with people who are better than you. Hang around and play with people who are better than you. It'll force you to get better because you know you want to be able to play with them. Um, and the and I think the biggest thing is you know it's got to be fun for you. I understand that practicing is you know a drag for a lot of people, especially when you're first starting out. But um, like I I watched your football game last week, and I watched your football game like two or three years ago when you were first starting out. And all you guys just ran around like ants and stuff, and you you know you didn't know what you're doing. You had you looked like a football player because you had a helmet and stuff, but you know you you took you practiced, you paid attention, you learned from people who are better than you, your coaches and things, and now you guys 
look like you know a football team and you're playing the right way and that will just keep that will just keep going so no matter what it is whether it's you know whether it's cooking or music or sports just hanging out with people who are better than you um what is your biggest pet peeve rudeness i don't like people who are rude and I, unfortunately i think the country's getting a lot ruder people are getting a lot ruder and i don't like that um, how would you describe yourself in three words? <laughs> um, three words. Uh, old but interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would your last meal be? I said pizza always works if it's the right pizza. Um, or a good um, Philly cheesesteak. Um, favorite season and why? My favorite season is like right now, fall. I like fall. Uh, it's The days are still kind of warm, the nights are cool, it's not good for sleeping. When the leaves start turning around here, it's, it's beautiful. Unfortunately, you you know the winter's coming after that, but uh, <laughs> but no, I, that's always been my favorite. Um, what is your favorite place in the world? Um, wherever wherever the people I love are, it's okay. As long as you got people around you love and like, the place is okay. Uh, if you if you if, I don't know, I've been to a lot of cool places. I like uh, I like Ireland a lot. I like Italy a lot. But hey, you know, it's all there's a lot of great places. The whole thing is just to see as many of them as you can. Um, this is the last question that I have for you. Um, who's the coolest person you've ever met? <laughs> the coolest person I ever met. Coolest person I ever met was uh, was a guy named George Martin, and he was the Beatles producer, and he was uh, just an English guy. He's got that great English accent type of thing. He's a really uh, talented person. He was he was really he was very cool. How'd you get to meet him? Uh, I interviewed him for a TV show that I was on. You know, um, Keith Richards was also very cool. He's one of the Rolling Stones, if you've heard of them. Yeah. And uh, he was also very cool. But I've, I've been lucky. I've met, I've got to meet a whole lot of people, people that I was fans of, you know, whether they were in movies or TV or sports or, or uh, music. Um, so I've been real lucky that way. But sometimes, you know, you might, it's, it's a problem though, because if you're a fan of somebody, and then you get to meet them, and they turn out to be a jerk. That's not great. But Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. He's a good interviewer. It's very good.